This is the three arts workshop week one. In this first lesson about the art of dialectic, we'll consider the three acts of the mind. There are three acts of the mind related to logic, apprehension, judgment, and reason. And to delineate these, I'm indebted to Peter Crafe's logic text, Socratic Logic, wherein he gives a wonderful summary of the three acts. Apprehension is the domain of terms or words. Judgment is the domain of propositions or sentences. And reason is the domain of arguments or paragraphs or causally linked clauses. Words name things. They help us to apprehend reality. But once we begin to combine words into complete thoughts represented by sentences, we've entered the realm of judgment. We're no longer just saying what a thing is, we're saying whether it is X, Y, or Z. When I combine propositions with words like therefore, because, and since, I enter the realm of reason. No longer just saying whether a thing is X, Y, or Z, but explaining why it's X, Y, or Z. Perhaps I can make this a little bit clearer. We have the word Bob. Bob names a person. What if I say, Bob is a nice guy? That marks a transition between apprehension, just apprehending Bob, and making a judgment about him. What if I say, Bob is a nice guy because he always asks me how I'm doing? Now I'm no longer just making a judgment about his niceness, I'm explaining why he's nice. This may make sense if I put it visually. Since Socrates is a man, Socrates is mortal. Here I have underlined terms, individual words. But I also have here words forming assertions about Socrates. Proposition 1 and Proposition 2. Socrates is a man, and Socrates is mortal. Taken all together with the word since, we have an argument. An argument explaining why Socrates is mortal. The skill we want to know for this week's quiz is a very simple one. We want to be able to distinguish between terms, propositions, and arguments. So let's look at the word birds. Term, proposition, or argument. Well, pretty clearly, it's a term. What if we have birds with hats? There I have more than one word, but if I pay close attention, I notice that this with hats is simply a modifier limiting which birds I'm talking about. This too is a term. So I can extend a modifier with even more words and still be talking about just one thing, just one category. I also have a term in number three. All right, what about these? Since we are over on our entertainment budget, we should not go out to eat tonight. There I have two propositions joined by the word since. And together, they make an explanation why we should not go out to eat tonight. Here we have an argument. Number two, Americans who are unemployed. Here I remember the last frame, how I can add on a modifier to a noun, a plural noun, and still get a single term. I haven't yet reached, in number two, even a complete thought. I'm looking at a term. What about number three? Plato wrote the Republic. Well, this is an assertion, and it's not causally linked to any other proposition, so I know that a single assertion by itself is a proposition explaining that Plato wrote the Republic. To conclude, terms are words or word phrases. They reveal what a thing is. Propositions are declarative sentences. They reveal whether a thing is and arguments are causally connected clauses which reveal why a thing is. If you can distinguish between these three, you'll be all set for the quiz.